Netflix has just responded to Verizon, which yesterday said in a blog post that buffering issues were Netflix's fault. Right now, a Netflix spokesperson tells us, quote, we'd like to thank Verizon for laying out the issue so nicely. Congestion at the interconnection point is controlled by ISPs like Verizon. When Verizon fails to upgrade those interconnections, consumers get a lousy experience despite paying for more than enough bandwidth to enjoy high-quality Netflix video. That's why Netflix is calling for strong net neutrality that covers the interconnection needed for consumers to get the quality of Internet that they pay for. The Federal Communications Commission is one of those government agencies that at the end of the day is supposed to do what is right for the American consumer. While most times we hear about the FCC when the news strikes on costume malfunctions and three-second delays that don't always work, there's something much greater that sits on their docket right now. The public is complaining, but is the FCC listening? Let's welcome into Midpoint former FCC Commissioner Harold Futchgott Roth to make some sense of it all. Harold, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. Well, the big crux of this issue seems to start with this battle that's going on between Netflix and Verizon and the consumers sitting at home right now, uh, myself included among many, who would like to watch a nice Netflix show at night but sit and just watch the wheel spin and spin and spin and spin. So if you could give us a little dig in here as to exactly what this battle is all about and who may actually be in the right here. Well, I think the first question is, uh, what is the problem? What you've described about consumers having slow internet access just may be a function of the level of service that you have. Uh, the, the issue the Commission is really focused on is whether uh, broad, uh, broadband providers are blocking access to certain sites or discriminating against certain sites. And there's really no evidence that that's happened. Uh, so what we're talking about here is primarily a hypothetical problem that some people are concerned may happen in the future that certain broadband providers may block access or discriminate against certain websites. Going back again though to the Verizon and the Netflix issue, uh, Verizon uh, and Netflix go at it. Netflix says that Verizon doesn't provide this. Verizon says Netflix is actually not paying for enough broadband here, enough space to get their signal out or to basically get the transmission rolling here. Uh, Verizon coming back and saying for whatever reason Netflix didn't make arrangements to deliver this massive amount of traffic through connections that can handle it. Netflix knew better. Did they know better or is this just a, a new contest going on here as everybody tries to find out where the money lands? Well, in fact, Verizon and Netflix entered into a contract for uh, Netflix to be able to provide enhanced equipment into the Verizon central offices to provide a better broadband experience for the Verizon customers. Uh, that's how those two companies uh, solved that problem. Uh, it's a problem, if you will, between uh, different commercial entities. Uh, it's not a problem really about uh, how Verizon or any particular broadband uh, company is providing service to their customers. Isn't this also about, and again, the consumer will sit at home and say, why are we not getting X amount of connectivity through the Internet? Because we continue to hear the stories that America is not as well connected as some countries are around the world, and that this is America. We should have better Internet connections. The consumer demands it, and a lot of them, like myself and many others, are wondering why. Well, that's a very good question about broadband speeds. That actually is not the question that's before the FCC today. Uh, that's a separate issue. Uh, and that's about uh, how do you encourage more broadband investment in the United States. Uh, and a lot of people are, have been looking at that. Uh, some of the uh, outcomes of the current proceeding may inadvertently actually discourage broadband investment. Uh, by reclassifying broadband as uh, uh, what's called a Title II telecommunication service that would impose not only a lot of regulations but a lot of taxes on broadband services that ultimately the American consumer would have to pay for. All right, well, as the consumer is upset at that, you're taking me now to exactly where I was going today, and that is what's in front of the FCC right now and consumer complaints here. This is, again, about net neutrality, which most people still don't understand as the two words. They kind of, all they want is their, their Internet to be as clear as possible. The FCC had a public comment time open for the public to come in and say, comment on it. 647,000 net neutrality comments as the first public commenting round closes here right now. Those consumers do seem to be complaining about what's going on here right now. Matter of fact, here's a public comment to the FCC. We have one of them here. 
When our internet service providers begin to restrict this, we as Americans suffer. We pay more, yet get less. The FCC needs to bring true net neutrality with the interests of the American public in mind. Is the FCC doing everything it can to provide that sort of service the American consumer is looking for? Well, I, I, I think there are a lot of well-intentioned consumers out there who may not entirely understand what this proceeding is about. This proceeding is not about figuring out how to get uh, faster broadband to the American public. Uh, the network neutrality is entirely about uh, per, uh, trying to uh, conjure up interpretations of communications law to give the FCC more authority to regulate. More authority for the FCC to regulate will not lead companies to invest more in broadband infrastructure. So if you want to have faster broadband in America, if you want to have greater capacity, uh, it certainly isn't clear to me or to a lot of other folks how more regulation on uh, network neutrality would possibly lead in that direction. It, it almost certainly would lead in the opposite direction. Give us an idea of what that opposite direction would be if indeed there was more government interference, as some people see it, more government regulation. Well. Uh, providing broadband infrastructure is very expensive. Uh, each year in the United States, U.S. telecommunications companies invest tens of billions of dollars in uh, providing more broadband infrastructure, both for wireless and wireline fiber networks that uh, go throughout the United States. Uh, part of the reason they invest is based on their projections of what their future revenue will look like, their future business model. If there's more regulation, the more regulation is almost certainly going to mean uh, less uh, cash flows for those companies, and therefore they're going to make fewer investments. Uh, that's, that's generally how it works. Let me ask you a question here and, and switch to something else, because certainly the FCC, as I said, is involved in a number of different issues here and a number of things that the consumer is most interested about. There is the current acquisition of... Comcast, Time Warner Cable, Comcast going after Time Warner. Dish Network is out there right now urging the FCC to reject this whole acquisition here, saying it would harm competition. Let me again take it down to, to the consumer side and again hopefully try to help them understand a little bit. The consumers always seem to be wondering why the FCC does not take greater care, at least in their mind, to make sure that these acquisitions do indeed drive down prices, make it more affordable for the American consumer. Yet there seems to be a thinking process that when these acquisitions go through, the prices will always go up. What is the FCC doing, and what can it do to at least try and keep the costs down? Because that's the one thing that the consumers are always focused on. Well, first of all, every merger of any size in the United States gets reviewed by one of two federal agencies, the Antitrust Division of the Justice Department or the Federal Trade Commission. Those are the two federal agencies responsible for reviewing mergers in the United States. Those are the two federal agencies responsible for ensuring that mergers do not result in greater market power for the merging parties to harm consumers. Uh, they take their job very seriously. Thousands of Americans work at those agencies. They're professionals. They do a great job. The Federal Communications Commission actually does not have any statutory authority to review mergers, and yet it has done that over the past 20 years or so. Um, I, for one, have consistently held that the FCC does not have the authority to review those mergers. When it does review those mergers, I think outside of its statutory authority, it has not done so in a manner that has been consistent with trying to figure out what's going to promote the consumer interest. So, so uh, yes. There, are, there is this major merger that's before uh, the uh, antitrust division of the, of the Justice Department of the United States, the Comcast Time Warner merger. It is also being reviewed, I think, completely outside of statutory authority by the Federal Communications Commission. Why then does it still go to the FCC then? Because it seems as if they shouldn't even be involved in the process. Every company of any size in the United States holds FCC licenses or FCC permissions. Uh, as part of uh, uh, any merger of any company, they, they will come to the FCC to get license transferred. When two banks merge, they come to the FCC to get license transferred. When two 
Uh, oil companies merge, they come to the FCC to get license transfer. The FCC doesn't review those intensively. Instead, they just automatically pass the, the licenses along. It's much like when uh, two trucking companies merge, they go to the Department of Motor Vehicles uh, to get their uh, truck uh, titles transferred. Uh, that's how the FCC should operate. But what they do is when two major communications companies merge, they decide they're going to look at that really carefully. And uh, that's what the commission has been doing for 20 years. Uh, I think it's wrong. A discussion for another time, certainly, because it seems as if the FCC sometimes is, uh, uh, doesn't need to be involved in certain areas where the consumer would be uh, always complaining about. Harold Fritzcott Roth, former FCC commissioner, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, it is, uh, if you look at these issues and you look at them back and forth and we look at Verizon fighting against Netflix and we look at the amount of internet access that you have, I mean, it quite frankly is very confusing to the American consumer. Look, let's make it very simple here. What the consumer wants, what you and I want, is to be able to turn on the computer, get your internet, get it at a speed, pay for it, and make sure that the money that you're paying for it is actually being used to give you what you are supposedly be able to get. Unfortunately, when it comes down to so many people being involved and the FCC now being involved, uh, the fights go on between these two major companies and also these large acquisitions to see if they will make any difference in the consumer paying a little less money. We'll take a break, come back on the other side, because this is Midpoint, where every day we question everything.